Here is the golden question of today. How do you know it's been too long that you've been working on something before you actually know it works? So in business, I have taken to this idea of saying, I'm going to practice business today, right? So I used to think up, I used to wake and think in the morning and think I have to make business work today. I'm going to win today. But all of a sudden, when I put working in terms of winning or losing, on the days that I felt like I was losing or AKA on days that I felt like a total loser, it weighed so heavily on me. Because as we show up as athletes in our business, we are going to have way more quote unquote losses than we will have wins, right? Because like a win would be booking a huge contract, getting funding from venture capital, getting that loan at a great interest rate that you wanted, getting like going viral, doing something that you're like, that was a win. Wins happen in such little frequency. So instead of looking at my days as win or loss, what I decided to do is simply decide to say, I'm going to practice business today. Oh, I'm going to practice business. And so what, the more I practice, the better I am at figuring out how long should I be working on something? So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to share my screen and talk about the process that I use to either stay patient or change my approach. Okay, so let's get this party started. As we're moving, oh, here we go. Here we go. Great. Step number one, I want to ask you, how long have you been trying your current approach? A lot of times people want to rush through testing or waiting to see how things are going to work. Y'all, good things take time as a general rule of thumb. Now, I don't think that this is just like a, a mandate, but I want you to be consistent with an approach for at least 90 days. And then you're going to determine key metrics to measure the success of your approach. So let's break this down by an example. If you went to a gym would you expect results in three days, in nine days? Would you expect significant results in 30 days? Well, we'd hope, but generally to get a good idea, 90 days, that's about three months. In fact, I just, uh, I saw an ad way too many times and it's for hair vitamins. And I'm like, I don't need hair vitamins. But then I bought the hair vitamins and they came immediately with a 90 day supply. They said, you need to do this vitamin for 90 days before you have an opinion. And I thought to myself, huh, this company with multi millions of dollars is telling me that I need to try something for 90 days to get a result. Then I feel really good about my general rule of thumb. I need to try something consistently for 90 days. So if you're seeing results after 90 days, well then keep going and make small tweaks along the way. Now, if you don't see results after 90 days, maybe consider changing your approach, adjusting the approach. So let's go back to the gym example. If I had been going to the gym for 90 days, right? I've been very consistent, very consistent, and I'm not seeing any changes. Well, then maybe I need to lift more weights. Maybe I need to add in more cardio. Maybe I need to do HIIT training. So I am not saying, okay, it didn't work in 90 days. Therefore, the gym will never be a part of my life. No, I got to adjust. Now with these hair vitamins, I'm going to try them for 90 days. And if they work, awesome. And if they don't, it doesn't mean that I'm not going to stop looking for other alternatives for healthy, glowing hair. Listen, in 90 days, I'm hoping that I come on and make a video and you mistake me for a Shetland Pony. That's my goal. I want to be the Shetland ponies of the business world. I'm just, listen, I have big dreams. Now, what we want to do here, most, most importantly, is that when I talk about going to the gym, you just can't have a gym membership for 90 days and be like, see, it didn't work. I can't have a 90 day supply of vitamins and not take them. You have to do things consistently. So if, and, the, and it's conditional, if you're staying consistent for 90 days, applying a new methodology, and you're either going to do more of it or you're going to adjust, now we get to move to step two. And that's to determine if it is time to change your approach you have to determine which next new thing are you going to try. So oftentimes people are like, I can do everything. I can try a million things. I just don't even know where to begin. Well, get it all out of your head. Brain dump everything you can on a piece of paper with a pen. Just let it go. Just write everything. Get it out of your head and put it on a piece of paper. And then it's a crazy thing that happens. When you see everything you could try, some things don't seem as exciting. Some things don't seem as viable. And then there's a few that kind of rank at the top. Now, all you have to say is, listen, I don't believe I'm going to choose the right answer. I'm going to choose an answer, and then I'm going to try and test all over again. So let's break this down with an example. 
Let's say that you post and engage very consistently on Instagram for 90 days. I am talking about most days, six out of seven days, you are posting on Instagram and you don't see any results. You haven't booked more clients. You're not getting more leads. Then you say, okay, I gave it a fair shot. Maybe my ideal client is not on Instagram. And then you decide to do something new. Maybe you say, what new things could I try? Where does my ideal client, what platform are they on? And so then you brain dump, remember, paper and pen, Facebook ads, creating a course. Maybe you can create a membership. Maybe you could start a podcast. Maybe you could start posting on LinkedIn. All we're basically doing is how do we fill our lead funnel with prospective people to come in to our funnel and hopefully buy from our business. So instead of trying everything, instead of trying Facebook ads, a YouTube channel, a podcast, an opt-in, doing all the things, you're going to choose one. Why? Because diluted focus gets diluted results. Rory Vaden said it best. If you try to do 10 things, your effort will be one-tenth of what you should be applying. But when you do one thing, 100% of your effort, you're going to get a very clear outcome. Then that leads us to step number three, and that is to create a test to determine if your new approach works. If your new approach works. So if I went to the gym and I was working out for 90 days and I was very consistent and I didn't see results, well, then I'm going to say, you want to know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do less cardio and I'm going to do heavier weights in smaller sets. That's my new test. That is my new test for the another 90 days. If I decide that my hair vitamins aren't working, I'm going to go and find a different hair vitamin or a scalp massage, or speak positively over my follicles, whatever it's going to be, I'm going to try something new and test it again for 90 days. So let's just say that you decide after your attempts on posting on Instagram and it just kind of falling flat, you decide to start posting on LinkedIn. In addition to Instagram, remember, we're testing. You're going to post 90 days of posting four times a week on LinkedIn, and you're going to engage with every comment and you're, you're going to respond to those DMs. And then you have to say, well, how am I going to measure if LinkedIn was actually working for me? You say, if I book one client in 90 days from LinkedIn, then I know my ideal client is on this platform. Do we know it's the right answer? No. Will we focus on one answer and test it for 90 days? Yes. So I want you to use this framework every time you ask yourself, do I need to make changes in my business? If you're at a point where you feel like you need to make changes in your business, then you're going to say, I'm going to brain dump. I'm going to test for 90 days. I'm going to be consistent and I'm going to have a metric. How do I know it's working? Now I'm going to come out and I'm going to predict the future because you're going to be testing and then you're going to get to a point where you're like, why does it feel like it's taking so long? I need to know. I need you to know it will take longer than you think, but do not give up. Because what you're learning on a consistent basis is changing the way that you're showing up and the timing is always perfect. As somebody who has been in the game over a decade, the timing has always been perfect. Now, speaking of making changes and speaking of testing things, how then do you know what next to test? I am inviting you to test me. I have a very specific methodology to double your revenue in 60 days with a proven launch plan. This is a free class that I am hosting. You can go to jasminestar.com forward slash launch, and you could find the link in the comments of this class. So why do I want you here? Well, when we talk about testing things, a lot of us, we brain dump and then we're like, okay, I don't know what to do next. I'm inviting you to my class. We're going to be talking about the four main pillars that you are going to need to double your revenue in 60 days. And here's the best part. I did it for my business. I taught other people how to double the revenue in 60 days for their business. And it has just been absolutely and positively amazing. Speaking of which, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. I'm going to tell you that when we talk about making tests and doing tests, it makes us feel a little uncomfortable. It can also make us feel very awkward. But I'm here to tell you that I actively invite awkwardness into my daily life. Why? because it keeps me accustomed to change. 
if I'm not feeling a little bit awkward, that means that I'm not trying new things. And if I'm not trying new things, I actually don't know what's going to be the best in my life or in my business. So this morning I was invited by a fellow entrepreneur and she had said, will you do an Instagram live with me? Now, doing an Instagram Live, it's not new for me. I've been trying and testing Instagram Lives for years. But she said, I do a get ready with me. And I was like, oh, no. Like, I have seen all the babes on TikTok do the get ready with me. I'm like, I'm not that person. Like, I'm not going to show up on camera without makeup and then do my makeup and while I'm talking about business. Even though I like watching that. I'm not going to be the person to do that. I, I feel awkward. I feel stupid. I'm probably going to do things wrong and I'm going to say it off kilter. And then I decided to say, wait a minute. If you are aiming to do new things in life and business, if you're aiming to be uncomfortable, if you're aiming to produce changes in your life so that you get different changes, if you're aiming to connect with people in a real way, all of these things, which I am doing, I had better said yes. So today for the first time ever, on Instagram, I did a get ready with me with my friend and we did our makeup together while we spoke about business. Now, whether or not it was actually a good or strategic business move, I don't know. Time will tell. But I am here to remind you that you have to get a little bit uncomfortable to try new things in your business. Uh, a question does my engagement or amount of followers correlate with my amount of estimated sales? Do I need more followers to get more sales? Well, the answer is there's a few parts to it. The more followers you have, the more potential leads you have for your business. But followers do not automatically equate to leads. So how do you turn your follower into a prospective customer? Well, that's what I am teaching in my live class on Monday. We want to make sure that we're giving people a very specific way to engage, for you to build trust, for you to make an offer, for you to focus on the conversion and have somebody make a decision in a specific amount of time. I have seen people with millions of followers and they don't have a sales mechanism, so they're not making money. And I have seen people with a few thousand followers and they're making six figures. Why? Because they know how to turn their followers into leads, go through a conversion cycle of building trust, having a, a, a specific offer in a definite amount of time to make a decision, and their sales skyrocket. So just because you have millions of followers does not mean that you have a, path, a clear path to a million dollars, not at all. But the good news for anybody, if you have 100 followers or if you have 100,000 followers, is that once you know the exact four pillar methodology to convert your followers into leads and get them to buy, then you're playing a very different game. And that is what I'm going to be talking about in depth on Monday. Jasminestar.com forward slash launch. The class is free. I would love to see you there. I hope you guys have a beautiful day. Take care. Bye, y'all.